done and i will just minimize this i think now you can see more part of my slides and after doing that practical stuff uh, i will show you something new if you are already using any of our test sets i will show you uh, the the kind of beta version uh, how we are going to make the things much more easier and the the software release will be uh, just next month and at, at the end of july so you will get it quickly so let's start the main agenda for this uh, session will be uh, a quick recap uh, what are the goose uh, generic object oriented subsession event and what are the sample values then we will go to the uh, protection testing in digital substations i will talk about the test sets uh, which can be used there are different kind of cmcs we will talk about uh, protection testing with goose and sample values we'll have a practical step by step approach how to do the protection testing uh, in ic6 and definitely uh, during the session anytime you can have course the q &A. let's start uh, as i already said uh, goose uh, the full form of goose is generic object oriented subsession event so it's a message a kind of ethernet packet of ram uh, uh, which is published on the network by a particular id intelligent electronic device in this case my p triple four mycom id will publish a goose for the testing and this id publish it to the network and a lot of uh, or several several devices can subscribe it so there is one publisher but can be many subscriber and for the same reason we call it a multicast uh, multicast it's 10 o'clock so uh, why it is required why we use it uh, normally we have this fast inter-device communication requirement for the protection or interlocking applications so we use it uh, between mainly id to id communications so in this picture you can see it here uh, if you are not using a goose normally we go for the binary input and binary output contacts and we just connect the copper wires from binary output contact to the binary inputs and we use some uh, DC voltage. And uh, this is the only way to just transfer one NONC contact status from one ID to another ID. So for this case, if you want to send three bit of information from this ID left side to this ID, you have to use uh, six copper wires between those. And to send nine bit of information, nine and one c contact data you have to use around 18 uh, copper wire cables between three ids and this just uh, shows us how much uh, cabling we are doing and uh, okay sorry for it yes i am sharing the ppt uh, i'm not sure you can see it or not are you sharing a presentation because I can see you and the setup and not the PPT? Ah, okay. So a quick question to other participants. Can you see my presentation right now? I am using a slide at the top. It is what is goose with some pictures. Can you just apply? Okay. So something is wrong with one participant PC. okay i'm not sure how it can be so the best troubleshoot is again you can log out and log in most of the time it works so thanks for the participant who replied uh, i'll just go back to the slide yeah so it is used for the inter device communication so if our id wants to send a circuit breaker status or uh, id want to send uh, auto reclosing status or tripping signals to the other id or bcu they can utilize either the copper wires or the goose. So if you are using these uh, type of arrangement, you are sending only maximum uh, nine bit of information between three IDs and you're using 18 copper cables. The replacement or the better things uh, we can apply is try to use a communication network. 
uh, where we can have at least a megabit of information or 100 megabits of information, even one gigabit of information per second. So these uh, these many signal chains we can transform between ID to ID on the, on the same network. And maximum we have to plug either one or two Ethernet cable depending on the uh, redundancy scheme you are applying. So this was the main motive behind uh, going to the Goose. The other one was uh, technical, uh, for the technical reasons, whenever you make or break a kind of switch or the contact, take certain milliseconds, three to five or maybe eight milliseconds, it depends. And uh, if we are using the, the Goose implementation or IEC 600 Pfizer implementation on the hardware level, already it is implemented well, then you are not wasting the three to five millisecond extra. And you can have a li little bit faster uh, communication. And uh, that was the motives behind this uh, new kind of uh, approach because we are sending more and more data between the IDs for different kind of scheme based communication uh, uh, techniques. Now, uh, the typical applications are interlocking. It may be a protection interlocking, uh, such as uh, reverse bus bar blocking, uh, or, or it may be a kind of switchgear interlocking for automation. We can utilize a goose to send circuit breaker status or maybe tripping status between the IDs. Uh, how it communicates, as I said, it is multicast communication. So a particular ID, let's say in this example, ID one uh, is sending a goose. Uh, just one second. Uh, sorry for the interruption. So in this example here, uh, we have this ID one uh, publishing the goose and uh, we have uh, these one ID2, ID3, and ID4 as a subscriber. And there is a SCADA system also. So whenever I publish a particular goose from any of the IDs, uh, then it goes to all ID connected on the network until and unless you are using uh, a kind of filtering in the switch uh, using MAC address or VLAN IDs, virtual LAN IDs. These are the two ways you can filter it. Otherwise it will go all device connected to the same network you cannot stop it. It do not work on the IP level. It works on the MAC address level. So it will go to each and every device. Now uh, the device which has been configured to receive and process it will process it, other will just ignore it. So this is by default the principle of a goose. Uh, and uh, in general way, like the way I'm talking to you right now is, is kind of a goose communication. I am speaking and so many uh, participants are listening to me. And uh, there is a difference like the client server we have between the uh, uh, particular ID to the SCADA system, a kind of client server communication works one-to-one -one only, and that requires IP address uh, to be in the same domain. But this is different, this is multicast. Okay, so uh, that's that's the, one of the reason why we have VLAN ID mandatory for the goose, because that is one of the way to filter it out in future if required. So if you want to just receive it uh, for testing purpose or troubleshooting, you can connect uh, any client software or any software with a particular uh, tool, uh, such as ID Scout in our case or Station Scout, and then the goose will go to that device also, whichever whichever has been connected to the network, and then you can visualize what is coming in this goose. So it's easy, and we will use it today. I have ID Scout with me, and we are going to have practical hands-on. So uh, then the second thing uh, is the sample value. Uh, we are going to use Goose for the tripping. So I will try to re receive the tripping command or tripping signal from this relay using Goose. Uh, and there are sample values, which are the digitized measured values transmitted via network. In other form, these are the instrument transformer data. The current voltage values we are going to receive in terms of digital ethernet frames. Uh, as per this drawing or picture, we have this uh, bus bars, isolators, circuit breaker, and then we have this instrument transformers and the feeder. So to receive this current voltage data, 
currently on most of the substation, more than 95% of the substation right now, we use the copper cabling between the field CTVT to the to the kiosk of the re relay and other kind of meters, other instruments. Now what we can do, either we can just change the whole technology instead of using this uh, normal CTVT, I can use uh, LPIT, low power instrument transformer, such as optical CT, or we also call them non-conventional instrument transformers. So these are new technology which directly converts the primary value to the secondary values uh, in digital form directly. Or we can connect a standalone merging unit to the conventional CTVT, connect the CTVT current and voltage using copper wire to the merging unit, and then merging unit will do the A to D conversion. It will convert the analog values to the digital form, and then we'll have these uh, sample values. So again, these are also multicast. Uh, one publisher can send the sample values and uh, many subscriber can subscribe it in, in the, at the same time on the same network. And how it works, this is analog value, this blue color here, uh, I'm trying to move my cursor. And uh, in digital form, we will just have some samples. Instead of having the continuous waveform, we will have some certain samples per cycle and then uh, we call that uh, sample values. And according to the implementation, uh, 9 dash 2 LE is uh, really uh, popular. That is uh, 9 dash 2 light addition, actually uh, suggested by UCA, International User Group, uh, for better implementation of sample values. So they advise you should have four voltage, four current uh, in the same stream stream is the data data transfer stream at the same time and uh, you should have 4000 samples per second it becomes 80 samples per cycle for the protection and meeting applications so that simply means uh, one sine wave uh, you'll have 80 dots after each 215 microsecond you'll have one instantaneous value from the waveform and that instantaneous value you'll put uh, the exact magnitude instantaneous value in the ethernet frame and then you'll transfer it on the network and uh, for 50 hertz system, uh, 80 samples per cycle becomes 4,000 samples per second. And for 60 hertz, it will be 4,800 samples per second. So they defined 80 samples per cycle for protection and metering. And uh, for power quality, uh, where we have to see the interharmonics, voltage dips and swells, they define even more, uh, 256 uh, cycles per second. Uh, that was done in around 2004 when the implementation guideline came, this 9-2 light edition. Currently, uh, we even have IEC 61869-9, and which will be the topic like I will discuss 61869-9 more uh, during practical and afterwards also. So uh, in short, the sample values are the digitized value of the current and voltage, which we are going to use today to inject a uh, uh, fault uh, to my relay. So I will inject the kind of uh, line folds and uh, I will check my relay is receiving it and giving me tripping or not. Now, uh, the test sets we can use for it. So Omicron has a lot of different models depending on the requirement of current and voltage channels. And here you can see uh, 356 with six current and four voltages, uh, 256, with uh, focus on the more accuracy and less amount of current. 353 with three current only. 850 is specifically designed uh, just for digital substation. It's most compact, less than two kg. You can keep it in your handbag and uh, it can give you uh, around three uh, sample value streams with test universe software and four sample value stream with releasing test software. And each sample value stream can have multiple current and voltage. I'm using word multiple because 61869 uh, allows you to have multiple current voltage. Now, uh, the test kit I'm going to use today is the 430, the most compact three phase test set we have right now. Uh, so it has six voltage and three currents, and I'm going to use mainly the sample values. So I, I'm going to use these Ethernet ports to just inject this to my relay. And 
all kits has uh, this kind of interface this is called net2 uh, let us at least boards uh, communication boards look like this uh, these ethernet ports i'm going to use today one for sample value one for goose uh, although i can use one also for both so there is no limitation in that i can configure those as as i want uh, this usb can be used for uh, communication between my computer and the test set uh, this rectangular usb can be used to connect a wi-fi stick uh, to control it wireless so uh, it's not mandatory that i have to connect a cable between my test set and my pc i can use even a wi-fi stick so this was a little bit uh, introduction of the hardware i'm going to use uh, and on both ethernet ports uh, comply ieee 1588 time synchronization which is required in the substation for testing merging units or release and uh, you can connect any ptp source ieee 1588 uh, is the ptp precision time protocol and then you can connect any ptp source grandmaster clocks and then it will just uh, synchronize with that gps and yes uh, we can configure those for goose and sample values which i'm going to use just for ic6 and i 50 testing now uh, this is a, a visualization of the software how it will look like uh, this is 4.1 currently i'm going to use 4.2 and i will show you after the practical glimpse of 4.3 with the, with the new features coming. So uh, in IC61850 section, we have a Goose module for Goose configuration. Then we have sample value configuration. And then we have IC61850 client server. So what is meant by the Goose configuration? So if I have to receive a particular Goose uh, from a test object to my, my test set, I have to use a Goose configuration. So I have to use a configuration file from the test object. And then I will map all the data attributes. Uh, data attributes means a particular Goose can have multiple indications. Uh, let's say for distance, it may be zone one trip, zone two trip, uh, phase A, phase B, phase C trip kind of things. So multiple data is coming in particular one Goose packet. So this multiple in indications or, or the data attributes I can connect to the virtual or maybe physical binary inputs. And then I can use any of the test module, uh, quick CMC, ramping, state sequence, or maybe distance. And the only mapping I have to do at the beginning is, is the goose configuration. And then uh, I can use any test module. The I don't have to just uh, keep in mind it, what I did. At the beginning only I have to do some configuration. That's why we call it configuration modules. Then similar for the sample value, I need to have the merging unit file. Merging unit is the device responsible for publishing the sample values. Uh, and I need that configuration file or at least the parameters or the ident identification name, SVID and the multicast MAC address, some information, and then I can type those and then done. Then I will try to inject current and voltage from my test set. And at the same time, I will receive the sample release streams on the Ethernet. Client server module is required for a little bit advanced testing. Uh, when I want to inject a fault and I want to even visualize the, the client server communication, communication to the SCADA, how these are going, such as uh, tripping indication or any other kind of reports uh, in MMS. If I want to see those, I can use client server. Also, client server allows me to uh, to just give some control commands in the ID to change the mode of the ID or put the ID in the simulation mode, or LPSG same and test mode and other, other stuff. So that's why uh, for, for those reasons, I can use client server module also for protection. Uh, sample value and goes are enough mostly. But for addition to, a device client server gives a lot of good functionality, switching the test modes, activating the reports, and giving some control command during the protection testing also. So this was something we already discussed. Sample values is for the publishing point of view. 
goose and client server for both way. We can send some goose, we can receive some goose, we can send some client server command, we can retrieve a client server communication. And the good thing about this CMC is that I can even uh, uh, measure or uh, subscribe the sample value. This is the only CMC right now uh, besides 850, which can subscribe the sample value also. That also I will do after practical, after testing this really, I'll, I'll show those, those features separately. But for other kits, they can just publish the sample value streams. And then you have to use either Danio, SVScout, or maybe this kind of device. Now, uh, how the Goose module works, I already discussed that uh, you, you need to uh, map uh, the binary inputs to the data attributes, which are going to be received, or binary outputs to the data attributes, which you want to just publish. And it works like this. So in the test modules, we have normally the binary inputs and binary outputs. Uh, which may be physical or virtual. Goose configuration allows me to retrieve or receive a particular goose and then uh, map these goose quantities to the individual binary input and output contacts. And then uh, whatever I do with the binary input and output contacts in the test module is reflected to the network in terms of a goose simulation. Or uh, if a goose is subscribed, uh, the, the goose incoming goose will, will be reflected as input goose or uh, input contact in the test module. Today we are going to use it like this. Uh, we have a particular goose coming on the network uh, from this multiple four. And then uh, this goose configuration will have 32 data attributes. So I will just link the first one because I configure those uh, data attribute as a tripping one. And that, uh, that will be reflected to my first binary input because I configured that in practical uh, implementation of a practical session, it will be more clear. We'll, we'll do, discuss that. And uh, I need the configuration file. That is a mandatory thing for the goose configuration. It will not uh, get to know what you are doing until and unless you have a configuration file available. So for getting the configuration file, I will use ID Scout software. And uh, this is a picture from the software. Uh, I'll better show you the actual thing. So here we can even see the current and voltages, which is a mandatory first wiring check is a mandatory, mandatory step for the protection testing. You connect everything and then you try to inject the current and voltages and then you verify the, uh, the magnitudes, phase angles uh, received by the relay are the same, which you try to inject from your test set. And then if it works, then you just go to the step two of testing the protection functions one by one. So this also we'll do today, and then uh, we can even see the tipping, uh, tipping status, for the tipping indications from the relay, even the fault location from the relay. We can read using ID Scout. So now our time for the practical session. Let me just stop sharing. I'll just minimize this and I'll just use my software. Okay. Uh, I'm using very low resolution, but yeah, can you verify? Still, you can see it. Just yes, one. Yep, yep. Thanks. So much. Uh, then uh, I can start with the first step. We call it OCC document. So I'll create one from scratch. And we can make a list of the things we require beforehand before testing it. So we do require a particular uh, SL file, the configuration file of this relay uh, so that I can, uh, I can configure my goose. So, P triple four SL. I do require the sample value merging unit file, uh, or at least the parameter of sample value ID and other other MAC address things. So that also that I can take from this relay also it will show it. So that also I'll note sample value data. 
then I require the protection settings. Again, the relay will give me. So I will take X Studio file. That will be the relay settings so that I can test the distance uh, protection. So now uh, uh, I will make a document first and then I'll get those three things and then we can start. So first thing always first, uh, we can insert test modules. We require a goose configuration module. So I can go to the goose configuration here, starting from goose G. Then I require a sample value configuration module uh, again, done. Then I have to check the wiring, the measurement. I try to inject some quantity and I will verify whether this is happening or not. Quick CMC. And then I have my distance module, add-on distance module, which I will use for the protection testing. So this is a test file I'll create. Now I have to just put the settings inside this. So I even have a relay software uh, already connected, Mycom S1 as well. It will help me. Uh, and I have my uh, ID scout also. So first I will use this software and get the required files. So these are the setting here at the right hand side, beautiful four is a Mycom relay. I have connected using uh, Ethernet switch to the uh, relay as well as to the test set. Uh, so I made the connectivity in such a way that uh, I can send the sample values, I, I can send the goose, I can receive the goose, and I can control the uh, test set as well as relay using the switch, uh, Hutchman switch. And uh, the power supply I have given to the switch and the relay is from uh, at the top two, two banana cables are there here. I'm giving around 110 volt DC. Uh, so that's that's how I, I'm trying to switch on those those devices. So better to see the settings here, right click on the setting, and then there is an export feature, and then we can have export to XRU. XRU stands for the extended relay interface by Omicron. Uh, we'll use it in our test modules, in our CC test document. So it will be easier for us. I'll put it in the new creation, which I'm creating right now in front of you. Done. So I got the relay setting. That is the first thing. The second thing I require the sample value data. So I can just open the settings and then uh, in the Ethernet and CIT. NCIT stands for the Known Conventional Instrument Transformer. So it, it is showing me the Known Conventional Instrument Transformer data that is a, uh, that is a optical CT or maybe a merging rate data. So in the logical node name, thanks Subham. Uh, logical node name, uh, this is the sample value ID. Omicron uh, space uh, CMC space uh, as we want. So I require this data mainly and then other information also like MAC address and other things I can get from merging net. This only. Now uh, I can even see this status and this becomes really important. If you are doing uh, activity in a substation, then always try to pay attention on this. Uh, zero, zero means uh, I don't have to synchronize. Uh, I can test a relay without actual GPS connection and time synchronization. It will allow me to inject sample value streams and it will subscribe to those. If it is uh, zero one, then it requires the sample value streams which are coming from a test set, which is connected to a GPS. Because this these bits zero zero and zero one is a part of sample value Ethernet frame. And if it is zero zero, that simply shows that this kit is not synchronized. Uh, it is not connected to any GPS, satellite, or any PTP or any other time source. So uh, I have not connected GPS. I can connect GPS also, but now I'm not connected uh, connected because I'm a little bit lazy also. So you can just uh, change the setting in the field. Uh, mostly it is zero one. Zero one means it is synchronized. It needs synchronization. Actually, these are 0, 1, uh, and then 0, 2, like 0, 1, 2. Three bits are there 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. In the binary system, it becomes 0, not synchronized, 1, 
a locally synchronized to globally synchronized. So this is how it works. So I'll keep it zero zero, so I don't have to synchronize this to time source. It's just a, a kind of a thing you can use here. And uh, that's all. Now I can just go to my uh, ID scout. I can close it. I, I can reopen it for you. Let me close this ID. Let me start from the beginning. So these are the main features we have on ID Scout. Uh, the first one uh, at the left corner, uh, we have Open SCL. SCL stands for the configuration file, uh, substation configuration language files. And uh, we can open any configuration file there related to IC6050. It may be ICD, CID, uh, SCD, or IID. Any of the configuration file I can just open. Then uh, we have this discover ID. Uh, if I have an online ID connected on the Ethernet network to my ID Scout software, I can see all the data mode uh, in the real time. I can monitor even the tripping, current voltage measurement, uh, fault location, everything I can do in the real time. And I can even download the configuration file of this uh, particular relay to my software, which I will use for testing. If I already have a configuration file and I want to simulate behavior of the ID from my PC, the communication part, IC6050 goes, a client server communication, I can do it uh, using simulation option here. Sniffer is kind of a feature when you just connect to the network and you just say sniff. And any incoming outgoing uh, data is just sniffed in a chronological order. So you can see what is coming, what is going, uh, not related to a particular one ID. So you can see whole packets going on the network. Let's try this. Uh, I'm connected on the network. Let's try first from there. Just start it. And it will start showing me some packets at least. So it is showing me goose. Uh, for a particular source and destination MAC address. And then it is showing me from where uh, it is coming, the name of this. So here at the right hand side, uh, we have a little bit more information related to the control block reference and then these 32 bits. So I said 32, but why it is coming 64? Because each status value has a quality. So let's say status one with a quality. Uh, these are the quality bits. This is the status. Now the inter interesting thing is that it is not showing me the name because I don't have any uh, configuration file loaded. These are the raw data kind of. So the only information I'm getting is the entry time, status number, sequence number, and this root data without the SL, SL definitions. So if I just uh, connect to the real ID, let me try it. And then you'll see the behavior change here. And one more thing here, I'm just having one goose why it is not getting repeated uh, because I am using a filter here or at the top here. So this small uh, icon here, uh, a kind of arrows or direction is a filter which just shows me the original message, not the retransmitted repeated message. So if I'll just remove the filter, it will show me all the goose going on the network. So you can see retransmitted will keep on going, keep on coming. Goose is a kind of repetition. It will keep on repeating after a certain period of time. So I will just stop this. I will just clear it and I will go to the browser or the start page. So in configuration, I can define uh, my network adapters. Uh, this is my PC network adapter. I can choose. Uh, out of multiple, if I have configured multiple adapters, IP address, and the license information and other application things. And now there is a possibility you can have the ID Scout software in PC as well as uh, in, in this MBX one, or there's a small box. Let me show you. This one. 
So this uh, small hardware uh, called MBX1 can have uh, ID scout, and then you can use it to connect your uh, SaaS subsystem automation system, and it provides you a lot of good processing capabilities as well as uh, really uh, robust cybersecurity measures has been implemented. So it it just provides a, a kind of isolation between your maybe corrupted PT, uh, PC to the secure source. So nothing goes from your PC to the source system, uh, vice versa. Uh, so it's a really nice way I discovered runs on this hardware, not on the PC. So that's also really interesting. Half of the part, IC6850 related part, runs on it and keeps inside it to what comes to your PC. So the, this option is there to switch it between the machine uh, or the PC. So this is also good. Now we need the configuration file. So I will just start discovering the ID. I just need the IP address. Uh, I can find it in the software again. Mm, ID configurator. Hmm. Or I, I remember it, I have seen it at the front, so I know the IP address, but it should be somewhere in the settings also. Okay, leave it. I have seen it from the front side. It was coming in ID configurator, and I know it, so I will type it directly. 192.168.1.63. That is the IP address of this device. I will discover it. It is just loading all, all the data models. Done. Now I got the data models of that ID. Uh, let's uh, see the goose. Left hand side, the first option is goose. So all the goose configured in the ID will be shown here. And uh, right now there's only one goose configured, uh, which I can see. So here you can see indication one, general input output. This is very bad implementation. This is addition one, kind of old implementation right now. Nowadays we can implement it in much better way. We can use PTRC and other kind of namings instead of using GGIO. So I do not recommend to use GGIO. Uh, then uh, it has up to 32. Yeah. We can verify 32 status value and with the quality. And we can just dig down what, what is meant by the quality of this status values. So I will just uh, I will just see the quality details. So there are eight bits for it. So the bits are uh, must be zero. Uh, let me read it. Let me subscribe to this goose. Now the goose data is coming here. I will remove it. I don't want to see it. So uh, now at least we can see the status. So these bits are false. Uh, you can see uh, these all bits are false. And that simply means the quality is good. If any of the overflow, out of lens, bad reference, oscillatory failure, any of these will be one, that means our quality issue with, the, with a particular indication of the data attribute. So zero is better. And that's one of the reasons why in Sniffer we are getting it. Let me try again. And this is the goose. Now, as I have connected and loaded the SIL file, oh, I'm live to the ID. Now I can see better naming here. So it is showing me better th details because I have connected to that. I have the SIL file. But, uh, so uh, I will just remove this. I don't want to see it further. Fine. Now, except goose, we have the reports also, which are the client server data. Um, and there are multiple buffered and unbuffered reports. Uh, URCB is the unbuffered. And there must be all are unbuffered. Let me just see if there is any preferred. Okay, these are unbuffered only. No issue. 
So the reports are two types. Either there is unbuffered or buffered, and you can have these reports configured to have the communication between your server ID relays to the SCADA system. So SCADA system gets the data using reports and name. And uh, report information is given here. Then the setting group uh, in addition to uh, or some of the new ID, they allow you to the, change the setting group, setting group one to two or setting group one to three. And that can be done using the setting group option. Then files allow you, this files option here allows you to see uh, all the files transfer between this ID to your PC uh, using FTP, file transfer protocol, or actually MMS. Uh, and these files here, whatever I'm showing right now, uh, are the event uh, as well as uh, even the completed files. So in protection, it makes sense to inject a fault and take the completed file and play it again to see the repeatability and uh, even check the uh, disturbance recorders, how well they are recording your disturbance. So this completed files can be also taken from here. Just click on the download option and you can take the completed files from, from relay to ID score. Uh, we have defined data sets here, and then uh, data model information is given here. All the data model, all the data stored inside this ID in the data model concept, logical node data attributes can be seen here. So quickly, what we want, uh, we want to have the configuration file, this file. So I will just save this as seal in addition one or two, whatever we want, save it. Uh, again, this is new file, so I'll save it in new folder. Done. I'll keep it open because I want to see it for checking the measurements. In measurement, data models, we have this MMXU, logical note for uh, measurement. And then I can uh, see the voltages as well as uh, okay, face to face. No, I want to see the face to neutral. These voltages, as well as these currents, and individual values also. This current, this one, and this one. And same for voltage, individual values, voltage, voltage, voltage. So these are the data I will verify this for measurement. Now I will open my test file. Okay, this is the file. And now in test object, I will just import the settings from uh, my, this is our protection testing library. Uh, a kind of template is required to test this relay. So also P442. The P442 template can be used for P444, the relay I have right now with me. And then I need the relay settings in the template. So I imported XRA file. Uh, and then I can use the XRA filters, this one. And then I, I just need the file. Go to desktop, the folder to this webinar, new creation. And then this is the relay setting I got from the S1 Agile software. It shows some error, that's fine, just continue, no issue. Just you got one error in our software, just you have to find it and see how, what it means. So it just shows you the one parameter here. This one. Uh, this is related to the over voltage, uh, so it's not required right now, so I, I can delete it. I'm just interested in the parameter related to distance protection. So done, I can press okay. And this part is done, I got the relay settings. Now uh, in the goose configuration, I can maximize this. So the important things are the which port you have connected for goose. Uh, I have connected a port one of my test sets for goose subscription, or I can use a subscription and publishing both. So I will choose this ethernet one. And then I have to import the configuration file. I just go to using ID scout. Uh, this is file. 
So in the format of IID, this one, I will just import it. And now it is asking me whether we want to uh, subscribe uh, the goose to the test set or you want to publish the goose or simulate the goose from the test set. So a goose coming from the relay as a tripping goose will be subscribed by my test set. So I'll use subscription. The first option, this one is good. Uh, I will press add. And now this goose has come. And this goose data set has around 32 information, bit of information. So I'll use the first one, which is for general tripping. I configure it in such a way. Uh, again, this is very poor kind of configuration. The better way will be to use the correct naming such as PTRC. So now I, I can just uh, connect it to the band input one like this. And now if this value will be zero to one, if this bit or in the goose will be zero to one, it will just high, uh, make my binary input one low to high. And then uh, this low to high will trigger uh, the timer and I can record the trip time. So this goose, the first uh, data attribute one will be in a tripping signal has been received by the first binary input of my test set. And this is how we map it. We can map multiple goose such as let's say this uh, indication three to let's say fourth input. And I can even define virtual input outputs so I can have 256 and even more uh, with, using relation test. I can have multiple goose that attribute mapped. Most of the cases we require one or two or maybe five times if you are using it for different phases. Currently, I will use this one. So this is the only thing I have to do for the mapping part. Now the sample values. In sample value, I can simulate up to three sample value streams. Uh, and it asked me for each sample value streams uh, whether I want to enable or disable here, option will come. And then general information about all sample value streams will be uh, whether you want to uh, force the value of science synchronization. So this was the thing I was taught, I was speaking about at the beginning that uh, the sample value streams, the Ethernet frames of sample value will have this data always there. If it is zero, that means the sample value source, uh, sample value source is not uh, synchronized to, to any, any GPS time synchronization. Uh, one means it is locally synchronized and two means it is globally synchronized. That simply means synchronized to the GPS. And uh, I can force this value, force means uh, I'm not synchronized to any GPS clock, but I can say oh, I am synchronized and please receive my data. So this is possible to fake uh, this particular data bit. Uh, right now I will use with CMC status, which is not synchronized, which will align with the, with the setting in the relay. And here on the downside, we have the different sampling frequencies. Uh, as I said, uh, for the nine days to LE, protection part 4000 uh, samples per second 4000 hertz frequency having one sample per packet uh, will work for the 50 hertz system if i am working for the 60 hertz system then the setting will be something like this this middle option you can see blue color highlighted that simply means 4800 hertz uh, 4800 samples per second and each sample is uh, is configured in one packet. So one packet can, contains one sample only. You can do it like that. You can have two samples put in the one packet, which is allowed in uh, 61869. Uh, this, this allows you to have even six packet, six samples per packet. So one Ethernet frame or one packet will have six sample information and then you'll send it. So the packet frequency as a whole reduce. But for 9 days to LE, they define one per or packet at least for protection and metering. And for the power quality, yes, they allowed eight samples per packet. For us, the things are easy. Uh, you'll find this 4,000 for the 50 hertz system uh, at most of the places. And uh, for 60 hertz system, you'll find it uh, 4,800. So choose it wisely. And then uh, this Ethernet frame, Ethernet port. So I'm using Ethernet port two for the sample value. So I'll use it. 
these are the other things. And one more thing, I'm submitting the sample value streams. Uh, I can do it in two way. I can send a flag or a pit information saying I'm I'm fake, I, I'm simulated one, or I can make it kind of real one. So remove the simulation option here, and then it will go like a real one. So this is kind of testing feature. Uh, it helps you a lot in online testing. So the things were easy. Uh, I can just again check the Ellen name or sample value ID, this one, Omicron, AMC, SV1, copy it, and I can go back and paste it here. And then in at least my case, it works most of the time. You don't have to put this multicast MAC address, but definitely uh, in, in a digital subsession, you can connect a merging unit to the ID scout software, and then you can have the configuration file and you can directly import it using this SL import feature. Now we have removed the simulation, we enabled one, we put the sample value ID, uh, we have put the ethernet to and frequency. Work is done. Now uh, in the quick CMC, I'm going to use the wiring check. I want to verify current and voltages. So what I will do, I will just uh, go to the view and instead of uh, secondary values, I will use it primary. And instead of absolute values, I will use relative. And relative means one time of the nominal or 1.1 time of the nominal. So I'll make it R phase one time of the nominal, Y phase 0.9 time of nominal, and 95% of the nominal will be C phase, different values in different phases. Then current also 0 0.1, 100, 10% uh, of the nominal, 20% of the nominal, and 30% of the nominal. Different values just to verify whether it works fine. 0.3. It helps you a lot when you are doing copper cable connections because most of the time you have phase sequence wrong. Uh, done, different values in different phases, and then you can go to view and switch it to the absolute. Now in absolute value, you can see it 230.9 kV, 207.8 kV, 219.4 kV, the exact uh, values, which will be shown by the relay software or maybe ID scout. Done, uh, now I can exit. I can rename it also. Go to properties and this was my wiring check. Okay. And now distance protection. When, uh, when once we have done everything, then we will test this uh, distance protection module, advanced distance module actually. Uh, here we have the pre-fold, post-fold, and max fold. Max fold means if I'm not getting a tripping within two seconds, I will say there's no tripping. And then uh, I can just go to the sort test, use impedance view. This is the characteristics I got from the relay software. So I can just choose some test points. It should trip in zone one, zone two, zone three. And this is reverse zone. Fine. So I have chosen just these seven points uh, and I can just exit. So this is my test plan. The only thing I have to do now, just press one button, it will keep on going throughout the sequence. So let's start. And uh, use then sample value. Then uh, quick CMC. In quick CMC, I have to manually verify it. It's a manual mode. So I injected quantity. I have to verify whether uh, these are uh, same in the relay software. Relay really, really has received the same or not. So I start and then just go to the ID scout. And yes, here we can see uh, the first phase, phase A, 200 ampere, phase B, 400 ampere, phase C, 600 ampere. And now we can verify in our quick CMC, 200, 400, 600. Uh, for the voltages, uh, I can just minimize this. Voltages, it, it is uh, one, uh, 
sorry 230.9 uh, then second one is 207 207 and the third one is 219 so these are matching and i can even see this uh, uh phaser view at the top if the same thing i have to verify from the relay software i can even use this uh, measurements here and uh, this will take certain time and then i can all it it will come here also so these are the same values phase to phase and phase to neutral uh, this is power this is the phase a 400 ampere sorry phase b 400 phase a 200 phase c 600 ampere voltage 230 uh 207 and 219 the same thing now i can go again i can just say uh it is passed wiring is okay and then exit the only thing it was manual i have to press some buttons because i have to verify the values from the relay advanced distance is automated it will just do everything and it will show me a report this one so this green check means uh, the trip times are okay so first tripping within 30, 22 millisecond 20.7 millisecond and four. i'll see the results again so the first is 22 millisecond in the zone one then 20.7 again zone one 400 16 zone 2 411 zone 2 again zone 3 of uh, 1.09 1.012 1.5 that is a zone 4 so these all are passed we are getting the screen checks now uh, one more thing we can do because id scout is already open i can verify the import location so here on the records uh, i have this fold location RFLO and I can see this here fault kilometers magnitude take it even I can see this fault impedance I'm just making the things like I don't have to see the relay front panel or relay software so I, I'm trying to make it simpler so here I have to take this value now what i can do i can go back i can connect a point at the 100 kilometer uh, sorry uh 100 percent of line length how i can do it i can uh just use the relative values i can see the line angle what is the line angle 86.4 great and i can use 100 percent of line length three phase fold for example and uh sorry remove all points i don't want to repeat it and now go to the three first fold again use a uh, hundred percent of line length and we can see the setting also really how much line length is there close this the relay setting i can see in my software also but this is open 164 kilometer and 11 ohms and these settings are in configuration i want to see 11 ohms are in primary or secondary form so it is in secondary form good so now uh, if i'm choosing a point here uh, it is showing me 11 ohms that is a secondary form uh, and i can append this sort I can play it. And I can verify 164.007. Uh, that is the length uh, we were talking and 11 ohms. Let's try something else. Uh, one more thing. So something 50%. Uh, Relative values 50% of line length and append this and this these are the 50 percent one sort 50 percent 
fine. Now I can play it. It will come around uh, 164 half, 82 something. And now check it in I Discord, 81.999 with the 5.5 ohms. So these are the ways uh, we can verify a lot of data which is required for the proper protection testing, such as seeing, seeing even the fault location values from the relay or checking the measurement using the measurement quantities here can be done. Even I can see the tripping signals uh, for different phases of, of different zones, distance zone one, zone two, zone three. I can do it for the overcurrent also. So a lot of things can be seen. So it helps a lot. Now I will just quickly see some questions if there is any relevant questions. Uh, Uh, Mohit, if you can uh, make me the presenter, then I can share the poll. Awesome. Uh, I have to show one more last thing. So uh, when I will start that, then I will do it. I, I want to just see any any question which requires a music. Yeah, there are, there are one to uh, so there are questions from my end as well. So if you have the question, then you can take it up, then I'll do it. Okay. So. Uh, I will see something related to I discount or not. Uh, okay, not exactly I discount. Fine. So um, I will answer questions later. Yeah, uh, there, there is one question related to ID Scout, uh, yes. I'll just spell it out for you. Uh, if I have both publisher and subscriber IED, can I view both together and the interaction in ID Scout? Can I use XDO file in Omicron library? Uh, yes. Uh, like if I have the publisher and subscriber ID both, so normally I see the goose coming from the publisher because the subscriber is not sending anything. Uh, but subscriber, uh, in addition to, there is a logical node called algos, logical node for goose supervision. And ID scout it's can, 11 can read the value from there to see whether the subscriber received the value or not. So somehow, yes, we can check uh, published goose and we can talk to the subscriber read the algos value and uh, we can understand whether the subscriber has rece received this goes or not. Uh, I think the same, this was the question. Yep. And uh, can I use Xero file in Omicron library? Uh, Xero is not required for goals. Uh, ID scout do not work on Xero. Xero is required when you want to just draw that distance characteristics. Uh, so for Goose, you require the SCL files, uh, the subscription con uh, configuration language files. Uh, XRU is not related to this. Even I can test this ID without using XRU. Uh, I can just give any current voltage faults and I will receive a Goose. But I, I just put the XRU setting because I want to draw that different zones, zone characteristics. Maybe it is distance, maybe it is differential characteristics or overcurrent characteristics. For that, I require XRU. Yes, uh, it can be done. Uh, I can connect to the switch uh, between the IDs and ID Scout can then, then connect to the both IDs and it can work. So now I will just quickly show some uh, new things and then I'll answer all the questions in detail. So uh, this was the way, uh, what I did, uh, you have seen uh, the process. We were using this uh, sample values here. And if you are familiar, you are doing it already, you know that configuring something is sample value. Why we require a separate uh, module for it? So in our latest release, which is going to come within one month, uh, this is the first uh, preview of it. <laughs> so this is kind of a internal version. The look will change of the software and uh, how, then we will have uh, sample value uh, inside the hardware configuration. So you don't have to open sample value configuration at all. You can just use your uh, sample value uh, configuration within hardware configuration. I'll show you how. This is the hardware configuration. And then uh, just click over it. And directly the window will come something like this. You can choose 
uh, how many analog channel you require or how many sample value you require. Let's say I require three sample value streams. Current and voltages. Then you can directly configure it by just importing the respective Excel files. And we gave you a lot of uh, example files, sample files. You can see this here. And uh, if you'll see it, it's not fully 9-12E, uh, just on the top, whatever we have is 9-12E, the UC implementation guideline, the 9 2 light edition. Uh, now you can see all other files are having configurable or flexible data sets. And this is something new feature, a really nice one. And we have implemented it fully in our device. So if you want, you can even have 12, uh, current and eight voltages within one sample value stream. So the ID which allow you this or merging unit which allow you this, you, you can try it. Uh, it will be available to all of you soon. And uh, let's say try first one that is a 9 to LE4 current four voltages. And then you can choose the respective sample value ID names. And then uh, you can even enable those or you can leave it if you don't want to use it. Uh, and you can use simulation feature from here, Ethernet port from here. And uh, here you can uh, even manually change certain parameters which will allow you uh, to do it. And then you don't have to do anything in, in the separate sample value configuration. So the new things are it, it fully follows the flexible data sets according to 61869-9. Uh, it allows multiple sampling frequencies. It allows you three sample value stream each hardware, uh, irrespective of the, of the current voltage sources. So these are the really nice features. And you have seen it first time, believe me. <laughs> Nobody else has seen it. Uh, so I'll just close this. And now, Subham, I will make you presenter. Yep. Thank you, Mark. I'll open the poll and request to all the participants please answer the poll questions uh, because it helps us in the future uh, webinar and all the content. So please uh, participate in the poll. I'm uploading the poll right away. Thank you. Uh, so actually, I have the poll. I can do it. Let me try. Uh, I'll go to it. Polling. And uh, you can go to file and open poll questions and select the file. Yes, I'm doing it. Let me. Or I will make you. Let's, let's try this one second. Panelist. So, boom. Change all to presenter. Fine, now I'll just, so you are the coach. Uh, you, you are the presenter now, you can see. Yeah. I'll just read the questions now. Uh, so uh, there is one question regarding uh, I'm not sure. Narayan, are you answering some questions? Because I see something right like GPS or something. Now it is not there. Uh, Mohit, I think he's got disconnected. Some question. Okay. Yeah, if you can see, uh, if you have some questions. So, so you can also verify there was a question related to GPS. I cannot read it now. It's not there. So, uh, the other question is for instance, if carriers, carriers end, Signal is being transmitted or received through IC61850. Can we do it using the CMC module? And we don't need ID Scout for relay testing, right? Uh, it's just an additional assistance. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, the ID, sorry, the, the CMC can send and receive the goose. It do not require ID Scout. Uh, the ID scout is required if you don't have the configuration files of, of the device you are playing with, or if you want to do any troubleshoot, like I was doing. I was trying to read the data inside it, the goose values, the, the data models, and other parameters. So it provides really good assistance. 
and help to retrieve the files required. But yes, definitely CMC can send and receive the goose. Even the carrier signals. So I will just say it is answered. I could have done the testing without using even switch uh, because I have two port here, two port there. I could have connected directly and then I could have done the testing, but I want to connect iDisk out and uh, I want to connect even the relay software. So I use the switch. There was a question regarding this. And this. Okay, I found this GPS question. It, it's in chat box. <laughs> so, uh, is necessary to work with GPS during the testing when we are working in the network? Where are where are many IDs? Can Omicron 356 synchronize an ID by IEEE 1588? Uh, I'll reiterate the questions. Uh, question. So, uh, the question is regarding: Do we require a separate GPS antenna when we are doing testing with multiple IDs in a network? Uh, or whether the CMC can send a particular PTP or IEEE 15 signal to synchronize the device whenever required. Uh, the question is really nice and uh, it, it took me to the point that CMC can actually send uh, PTP signals and it does it uh, when we are testing uh, a bus bar or testing, a, uh, let's say, transformer differential using three CMC or two CMCs. So I can synchronize multiple CMCs. One CMC will become always a source of PTP and it will send the signal to other CMCs. And that is how we implemented it. And that can be done only uh, with a software called Relay SimTest that allows uh, you to use one CMC as a master GPS clock and synchronize other slave CMCs to the master clock using PTP definitely. But uh, we have not implemented anything like this will work as an antenna because that do not make too much sense. In an actual substation, most of the time we have the GPS available. It's it's one of the important part there. And uh, to synchronize the, the release, uh, we rec like in this case, if I wanted to test this relay and it is synchronized, then I can even change the setting and I, I can test it easily, no issue. But uh, if it has to be synchronized and then tested, then better to use GPS antenna of your substation. And then synchronize even our test set with the same GPS antenna, then it will work. That makes more sense because you are testing the actual realistic setup. Uh, but yeah, vice versa, yes, CMC can do it, but we have not implemented in that way because we never wanted to do to, to allow you to do that uh, stuff. And we have separate GPS antennas. I think one of these uh, you cannot see, but it's just behind me, which we use in our setups. Uh, so. I hope I answered you. The only only uh, places you require synchronizers synchronization must is merging unit testing. If you're testing a merging unit, then definitely 101% you have to synchronize it. That makes really good sense. Without synchronization, you cannot test a merging unit. The other way around, if you have to test a uh, line differential and you have two different test sets available at two different ends, then you have to synchronize our test sets, not the relay. The relays are always connected with that fiber link and they are getting synchronized using those. So that's one of the reasons like uh, CMC do not synchronize the relay. Vice versa is possible, your GPS can synchronize to CMC. I'll just look for other questions and then I think we are already uh, yeah, uh, I think I, I had all the time. Yeah, uh, Moise, have you answered uh, the last question that significance of sample values in the current scenario? Let me check. Yeah, this is the last question. I have not. Oh, okay. So, uh, what exactly was the significance of sample value in the current scenario of testing? You saw it. Uh, the, uh, the significance of sample value uh, 
the, the, like I have not got the question in the right way, but uh, in my testing setup, if the relay, this relay P triple four, what I have right now, you can see on your screen, cannot have any analog quantities. It is totally uh, designed for NCIT. So it do not have even a current voltage port. It has only ethernet port kept, uh, enabled with nine days to LE. Uh, on the other hand, these these IDs we have, these ABP and CMOS at the back of me, they allow me to have both. We use the, those for the testing or training purpose. There I can use anything, either sample value or, 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 the, or the analog quantities. Now for the significance in terms of utility, why you should implement it, how it helps. Uh, one of the good thing I like is safety because you know that if CT secondary is open uh, and someone is near to it, they can have really high voltage. And here I, I'm playing with it. I'm just sitting here uh, and uh, the, the, this wire is taking all the current and voltages. And this can come from the field to my uh, kiosk and then I can play around. If it is unplugged, I will get just one error message. So for the safety point of view, this is the future. Uh, for the electrical engineer safety, I will advise or maybe it depends on your company policies, how you go ahead with sample values. So that will make the things more compact and more secure. That, that's my point of view. And once you will apply those two technologies, only then you require this, this kind of testing setup. Otherwise you have to connect this uh, copper wires red and black. So I think I tried to answer it. And sample value allows the second benefit is that it allows you to do the testing at the running system also. So uh, I have not gone to that complex topics of using test modes and LPSD sim because I wanted to make it more interactive and more simple. But uh, if you think about those test modes and LPSD features, then you can test a running system IDs without taking a shutdown. So that will be a one more advantage. Uh, and, and you can do it remotely. I can sit here and I can test something uh, which is located, let's say 500 kilometer away from my, my location. So those are the features like remote testing, safety, uh, no shutdown required kind of features will help you in the future. Because you don't have to remove and connect that copper wires. Uh, then is there any clock signal port for synchronization? Yes, uh, all the Ethernet ports are are uh, capable to receive uh, the PTP signals uh, for the sample values and for the goose stamping, you don't require that much high precision. So even you can use SNTP. So that the, there, is, well, there was one feature to have SNTP time stamping on the goose, published goose, and that can be done on the Ethernet ports. So no separate port is required. I'll just say this is also answered. And now, so the polling has been done. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, like uh, Mohit, I think we are uh, 20 minutes ahead of the time right now. Yes. Okay. So yes. I have uh, dropped it, uh, dropped the uh, email ID on the chat. So the participants are requested to please note down this email ID. If you have any questions, any uh, any queries, any uh, inquiries about the today's session and for the digital substation testing, please feel free. Uh, to share the inquiry, share the query on this email and we will be happy to answer all your queries. And the remaining queries, we will be happy to answer uh, privately on the email ID. Yeah, uh, so I think uh, uh, we now officially close this ses uh, session and uh, it's a, it was a very, very wonderful session by you. So thank you very much from my side to all the participants for sparing your time, sparing your precious time to join in the session. And if you have any questions, any query, again, you can just send it uh, email on the email provided in the chat box, and we will be happy to answer all the queries. Over to you, Mom. Uh, thank you, all of you, and have a nice day. So we'll see you in the next webinar or next training. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.